The Boundary Waters Canoe Area in northern Minnesota is closed for a week for the first time in 45 years due to fires in the area, more specifically the Greenwood Fire. Here's video from the U.S. Forest Service on August 19th from the Canadian Provincial Park just across the border from the Boundary Waters. This weekend, officials were scouting the one million acres of the Boundary Waters, getting campers out. Uh, here's a Saturday briefing on the Greenwood Fire. Morning, Peak Lover Operations Section Chief with the Eastern Area Incident Management Team. Today is Saturday, August 21st, 2021, and this is the operational briefing for the Greenwood Fire, which is located uh, between the communities of Isabella and Ely in uh, northern Minnesota here. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, talk to you about uh, the fire growth yesterday and then talk to you a little bit about today about our operation plan. Uh, the fire is currently at 9,067 acres and we have 0% uh, containment uh, on the fire. So I'll start with uh, what happened yesterday. Uh, down here at the southern end of the fire, Division Alpha, um, Crews worked hard on the southern end, trying to create a good solid anchor points. Uh, partway through the day, um, the wind shifted. We had winds out of the, the southeast, which challenged our lines that we had on this western flank of the fire. Uh, so they had a few uh, slop overs on the fire where they had to start chasing the fire. Uh, so progress to the east was slowed down in our efforts to go around to this west side. So. Um, as fire progressed towards Highway 2, uh, crews got in uh, where we have structures up and down the line here and had to do point protection along the structures. Um, and uh, today, so far, uh, we, we're not aware of any lost structures uh, on that flank. Uh, the most activity was up as we move into Division Zulu. Uh, the fire did cross Highway 2, and it, it, it ran on a north westerly path towards this jackpot lake up here to the north. A uh, fairly narrow uh, finger of fire, uh, but it was very active. It was very challenging. Uh, access is difficult. Um, uh, but with our infrared mapping from last night, uh, we've got the perimeter here, uh, and it is still just south of jackpot lake um, and fairly narrow. Um, and then also uh, with that operation yesterday, it, it a lot of our resources up into this uh, uh, area west of Slate Lake uh, to make sure that we've got good structure protection and plans in place up there. Uh, so that's what was happening yesterday up there. Uh, we also had a contingent down here in Division Bravo on the east side. We continue to assess um, what we would do in the event that the fire uh, takes a run towards the McDougal Lake area with all the structures down in there. And uh, they've come up with a really good plan on this side, a defensive firing plan that they may enact at some point. Uh, so uh, for today, uh, what has happened is we had a front come through last night. Uh, we received very little, only a trace or a tenth of an inch of rain on the fire last night. Uh, with that front comes some increased winds, and the winds will be tracking today uh, from southwest, west, to northwest which is going to be a challenge for us with that passing front. The winds are going to gust up to 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour today. Uh, so what that will do with this, this fire, uh, we're anticipating some growth toward the uh, southeast. Uh, it may bring into play the, our defensive fire plan here for the McDougal Lake area, um, but we have trigger points established uh, for when we, would, when we would do that. We would probably uh, start down here in the southern portion and uh, carry fire up toward the north uh, as fire is progressing towards the lake in an effort to um, widen out the control line and uh, try and keep that fire from being able to spot over uh, this east side. Um, so that's really uh, what we're working on hard today, um, and I appreciate it. Thank you.